Hello and welcome back to the Level Up English podcast, the best place to come to practice the British accent, learn about English culture and have fun, hopefully all at the same time, with me, your host, Michael Lavers. I would love to talk about the topic today of generations. And this is something that I am noticing more talk about now, especially as I'm getting older and there are more and more generations appearing beneath me. And it's quite scary, but I'm sure uh, the other old people or the older people in the audience can also relate to this as well. There are many benefits to aging and getting older, you know, gaining more wisdom and intelligence maybe, but it is also scary that there are so many more young people in the world and you know, when you go out to some certain places like a music festival or even just going to the doctors and realizing, wow, everyone here is younger than me. My doctor is younger than me. Such a scary feeling. <laughs> if you are very young, then you won't realize how scary that is. I am getting to the age where a lot of the people I trust doctors and things like that, they some of them are younger than me, which is something I've never seen before. But, well, strange, strange times. But yes, I thought we could talk about this topic of generations. There's a lot we could say here. So I'm going to talk about the names of each generation and some characteristics for each one. And yeah, I don't know, maybe you could also tell me if you, in your language and culture, have other names or other definitions for these generations because it is kind of a Western American point of view, right? These generations might be very different in other countries that have had a very different uh, history over the past hundred years, for example, but at least in the UK and the US and I imagine most of Europe as well, these are the generations that we have. So I think I'll get right into it now. I think I'll just get straight into it. And I'll start by uh, sharing these generations. The first one, I'll start from the oldest of my list, is the silent generation. And these are people born between the years 1928 and 1945. So I guess the old, let's say the youngest person in that generation would be 79, is that correct? 79. I don't know why I started talking about numbers when I knew I'm bad at maths and yet I'm somehow doing it live while talking. But anyway, I'm not going to edit this. I think it's around 79, but I'm not going to pause and think about it any longer. <laughs> so these are, you know, elderly people. And um, by the way, if you're not sure, old can be a little bit rude. You know, you don't really say old people, especially if you're talking to them. Elderly tends to sound a bit more polite, an elderly person. However, you know, just to be safe, maybe it's best to avoid referring to their age at all, because not everyone is proud to be old, right? It's always good to be safe. But yeah, this generation, they were kind of brought up during and just after World War II, so that is a very difficult time. And I suppose it's a time when, let's say in the UK, there were things like rationing and not wasting anything. That was huge back then. You know, I see this in people like my grandparents, for example, where they are very careful about not wasting food and they, they, they're not as wasteful as people would be today. Another thing with this generation is they really value job security and loyalty. So there was a big thing back then, which is you have a career and you stay in that career for life. And I think that's only recently beginning to change because even my parents, they still have this kind of mindset because I think it does take a few generations for uh, deeply held beliefs to change. A, a deeply held belief is a belief that's really strong and important to you. And if you really believe something, you pass it down to your children and it it doesn't disappear so easily, does it? My grandfather, for example, I know he worked on trains. He was like a train engineer, I suppose. He, he fixed trains for his whole life, basically. He worked there 
And that was a source of pride at the time. You, you know, you're proud of your career and the hard work you put in. And I suppose if you were to change jobs very frequently, it would be seen as a very negative thing. Like, what's wrong with you? Why can't you keep the same job? However, today, of course, it's more expected that you might change jobs where even employers might not expect you to stay there for many, many years, right? And I suppose this is partly just because people today maybe respect, I don't know, this, this is just my intuition, but maybe people have more respect for the shortness of life and they want to make the most of their life and they'd rather, they'd rather kind of have fun and enjoy life rather than having a career and building up money and security for a long time. Maybe we also see this pattern in the decrease in birth rates. You know, fewer people are wanting to have children these days. And maybe it's related, that kind of having fun, enjoying your life and not being too concerned about saving for the future uh, in many cases. But it's just my ideas. I don't know. I might be wrong. But anyway, the next generation is quite important and they get more and more relevant as time goes on, right? Because maybe the younger generations have more of an impact on the current uh, world and society. But the next one are baby boomers baby boomers. And these are people born between 1946 and 1964. So if my maths is correct on this one, I believe the youngest of them would be 60. So it's roughly people aged 60 to 80. So you can see a generation is approximately 20 years, right? So baby boomers, they grew up in a time of economic prosperity, where the economy was booming we have that word booming again, which just means going really well, like exploding, increasing quickly, but in a good way, right? So there was a lot going on during this era, uh, such as the Vietnam War, the war in Vietnam, uh, civil rights movement, uh, the space race, trying to get to space, get to the moon as well, which happened just after this generation. So there's a lot going on uh, at that time. And the reason why they're called baby boomers is because there was a high birth rate at the time. It's kind of post-World War II era time. And the baby boomers were having lots of babies. So there was a baby boom. Again, boom means a quick increase. So a boom of babies. So baby boomers, there was many babies being born at that time. And because of that, I guess there was also a high demand for jobs, right? So maybe unemployment was quite high. I don't, I'm not too familiar with that era, but I have heard that there was a large demand for jobs. And there was a lot of uh, positive traits of this era, such as, you know, working hard and a sense of optimism and positivity about the future. However, <laughs> you may know that this generation is now the... I don't know, they're one of the most made fun of generations, I would say. Because there was a meme, maybe five years ago, which was called OK Boomer. I don't know if you've heard of this. But Baby Boomer got shortened to Boomer. And it's almost like a derogatory term. Derogatory kind of means rude or offensive. Baby Boomers got associated with not knowing much about technical things or computers. Or just not knowing much about how to do things that the younger generations thought was quite easy. So it could be something quite innocent and, and silly and funny, like not knowing how to send an email. You know, you don't know how to send an email. I've had to help uh, my parents send an email once or twice in the past, which is always funny to me when you think you grow up and you think of your parents as knowing everything. And then one, one stage of life, you get older and your parents ask you for help on something that for you is so simple, but just because you've had a different upbringing, a different uh, life, that the knowledge is different. So there's some simple things when it comes to computers that some baby boomers may not be good at. And this kind of turned into a meme where people would make fun of this. And it would kind of come up a lot when a an older person would express an opinion that was maybe a little bit dated, something that isn't relevant anymore. It was very common when it came to opinions about money and like why why do young people have no money? It's because they're buying too many 
you know, too much avocado toast and all this fancy stuff that old people don't need to buy because we're better than the young people. And then the young generations would fight back and they would dismiss their comments with the simple phrase, okay, boomer. So it's, it's basically saying, okay, you're an old person. You don't know what you're talking about, whatever. Kind of like that. So it was a very funny meme at the time. It's kind of died a little bit now, but that was a big meme. But I think it's still true that if you want to insult an older person, you might use the word boomer as an insult, which I don't know. Is it offensive? Is it funny? That is up to you to decide. Let's move down to the other, the next generation, which is Generation X. Generation X, born between 1965 and 1980. So the youngest of Generation X would now be 44. So roughly between 40 and 60, that is Generation X. A lot of this generation grew up in a time with more technology than the previous one, with computers becoming more ubiquitous. Ubiquitous means everywhere, basically. If something is ubiquitous, that means it's all over the place. You can see it everywhere. And I suppose you could say there was a little bit more rebelliousness, people rebelling against the previous generations where rather than having a secure job for your whole life, it was much more common to appreciate or to value a work-life balance. So this is when that term work-life balance became popular, I believe with Generation X. So this is rather than, you know, working hard and supporting your family and maybe traditionally the husband being away all week to make money for the family, there was much more uh, emphasis on a balance. So you work hard, but also you have fun and you play hard as well. And there was more skepticism, which means not trusting something, skepticism of authority and, and managers and that kind of stuff. But I think this was quite uh, an interesting time. Again, it's not my generation. I'm not Generation X, so it's a bit before my time. But there was a lot going on here. The Cold War, which was the war between the Soviets and, and the West and the USA, and that was a very scary time. And the threat of nuclear war was really high and it was very scary. This is the time when there were many uh, bunkers built in the UK in case there was a war. You could hide in the bunker and shelter from the bombs. Very scary time, very scary time uh, as far as I've learnt. But also it was the rise of stuff, like the rise of computers and the beginning of the internet age. So I imagine it was a scary but really exciting time as well. There was a lot happening and... As video games and internet stuff started to get more common, I suppose people were really thinking about the future, like what does the future hold? And I guess I should mention at this point, if you are born in any of these generations, I know all of you are born in one of them, but maybe you could let me know how it was for you. Do you find anything I'm saying relatable or do you have a different experience? As I said, Generation X is before my generation, but I'd love to hear your experience. If you grew up in this generation, uh, what was it like? Did you feel scared about the future of the world or did you feel optimistic and positive about all these things changing? It is interesting though how in common discussion, Generation X is not often spoken about. We often talk about boomers and then the two younger generations, but I feel like this one often gets ignored for some reason. I don't know why. The best generation, though, is millennials. That's because I'm included in here. <laughs> so these are people born between 1981 and 1996. So the youngest millennial would be 28, I believe. So I think this is the one I can talk the most about because I have direct experience with it. I am admittedly a young millennial. I am on the younger side of the millennials. I'm not born in 1981. But I do feel like the millennial generation was the last generation to grow up without the ubiquity, without the ubiquitous use of uh, smartphones, devices, social media and stuff like that. You know, I was growing up in the 2000s. Uh, I was still a child in 2005, let's say. 
uh, well, I was, <laughs> and at that time, I didn't have a phone, I didn't have social media, I think there may have been some things that started, like, did YouTube start in 2004? I think YouTube may be 2004, but everything was very new, and it was exciting, and it was something that we spoke about at school, uh, these new websites like Facebook and YouTube, but they weren't so popular that they affected the way the world runs. I mean, now they're, so, they're just so huge that it's affecting everything, but in my childhood, I can look back and remember you know, every weekend we went for walks, we went to new places on holiday, and after school I would come home and climb trees with my friends, I would go camping in my back garden, that kind of stuff, and I didn't have any phones, and you know, we did watch TV, we watched a lot of TV, I'll be fair, I'll be honest, but I do feel like I was quite lucky to grow up and not have the distractions that children have today. And I am at risk now of sounding like a boomer. I don't want to sound like an older generation complaining about the new generations, but I, I, I can't help but feel happy that I didn't grow up with phones. Just to give you some perspective, I got my first phone when I was about 14, I believe, and it was kind of one of those brick phones, we can say, where it's like really thick and I would always kind of throw it up in the air and it would drop on the ground and there was no damage done. You, know, you, you didn't really worry about phones back then. And you could text, some of the new ones could take pictures, there was Bluetooth, but there wasn't much else. It was fairly simple. It was a simple time, you know. However, I think it's changed quite a lot now. You know, it's very common to give children smartphones these days. I, I was very old when I got my first smartphone. I think I was in my 20s when I got my first smartphone. Not because that's when it was released, I was just reluctant to get it. Um, I remember when smartphones first came out, I was in school, I had a Sony Ericsson phone, I really loved it, and everyone was switching to smartphones, and they were, they were touching the screen without buttons, and my first reaction to seeing that was, that's never going to take off. Yes, a phone without buttons? That's just ridiculous. I, I didn't believe it. Um, take off, by the way, in this meaning, in, in this sense, means to get popular. I thought, there's no way that will take off. There's no way that will get popular. Especially back then, I think they were weaker. And I'd see all my friends with uh, touchscreen phones. The screens would be broken. They would be shattered. And I was very happy with my older phone. So I tried to avoid it for many years. However, eventually, I gave in and I did have to get a smartphone and admittedly it did make life much more convenient and useful. So I have to admit it was a good change but I still miss the old days when things were, in some sense, things were simpler, right? I'm sure you can relate. But yeah, I'm sure there are still many children who go outside and play and have fun but there's always that distraction of, of phones and social media and stuff like that. Um, so I think I'm quite happy growing up when I did. We had some nice uh, video games and TV shows, but it wasn't addicting enough to keep me inside all day. But once again, let me know your opinion on that. Let me know if you think that's right, or maybe if you are a younger viewer or you're a parent of a younger generation, maybe you can let me know that phones, it's not, it's not the end of the world. Maybe children can still have phones and go outside as well. It's not one or the other. But anyway, the next generation we've got, let's do two more now and then we'll come to the present day. Generation Z, Americans would say Z, I would say Z, uh, also known as Zoomers. We have Boomers and Zoomers. So these are people born between 1997 and 2012. These are people aged between age 12 and 27. And I will just say, I have heard some criticism of the generations because especially as things are progressing more quickly, the generations seem to make less sense. Because, you know, if you look at a 12-year-old and a 27-year-old, there's a big difference there. And they've had quite different upbringings, right, based on uh, the level of technology they've had. So I guess if we're talking about age, it's fine. But if we're talking about 
distinct characteristics of each generation, we might need to change the length of a generation because there's so much change happening now that it's much harder for a 12 year old and a 27 year old to relate, right? If that makes sense. But anyway, this generation is of course younger and this is the first generation who we can describe as being digital natives. So these are people who have grown up with smartphones and social media and it's just natural to them. They do not remember a time without this stuff, which is really strange, right? I feel like we all feel like our own upbringing is normal, but I find it quite hard to imagine what it would be like to grow up with smartphones and you know, maybe a lot of Zoomers don't even know when they were invented. Maybe the older ones do. But if you're born in 20, 2012 or 2010, then you may not know because it was invented before you were born. So that's really interesting to think about. For many of us, smartphones still feel like a fairly new technology. But for these younger people, for the Zoomers, maybe, maybe if they don't know, maybe it seems like it's such a big thing. It must have been around for many, many years. However, it's not all bad though. There are a lot of bad things that people say about this generation with social media addiction and phone use, but I think there's also a lot of positivity as well because Zoomers, they tend to focus a lot more on mental health awareness and inclusivity and stuff like that. And hopefully these are positive things that will improve the world, whereas older generations would be more dismissive, ignoring, issues such as mental health. Uh, younger generations seem to put more importance on that, which might be a good thing. Other things as well, like it's more common for this generation to be involved in climate activism and uh, political activism and stuff like that, which is uh, maybe a good change, who knows, but hopefully that will lead to something good. And another difference that I have heard between millennials and Gen Zs or Zoomers is the difference between introversion and social ability. I don't really know that many Zoomers, so I can't say from personal experience. I've also heard that because of the use of technology that Zoomers may have a more difficult time dealing with new people and talking to people face to face, which of course is very bad news for many workplaces where that is an important skill. I also heard a thing, a study done, where they showed a higher proportion of younger people, like Zoomers, don't say please or thank you when they're talking to, for example, service staff or waiters or something like that. And apparently this is because uh, kids that are growing up using things uh, like AI, I don't want to say the names, I don't want to trigger them, but... Uh, Google has one, Amazon has one, where you can talk to them and they can help you answer questions and do things. And, you know, when you're talking to AI or robots, you don't really say please or thank you. You just say, what time is it? And they will tell you the answer. And apparently this is teaching some young children that it's not necessary to say please and thank you, which is quite scary to think about. Like, what? How is that going to progress in the future? I think also it has yet to be seen how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected this generation too, because let's say you're the younger one and you're born in 2012 or 2010, then during the pandemic you would have been about 10 years old, which I suppose is an important age for development and making friends. And when you're 10 and you cannot see your friends for a couple years, that's a huge percentage of your life, right? It's 20% of your life. So I wonder how that has affected people. And I'm sure studies will be done in the future on that topic. But anyway, the last generation is Generation Alpha. And these are mostly babies who are born between 2013 and today. 2014. No, no, no. <laughs> 2024 at the moment. So the youngest would be one day old. Congratulations on your birth. Hello, welcome to the world. And the oldest of this generation would be 11, I believe. Yeah, 11. So this is the first generation to be born entirely in the 21st century. Very exciting. And, you know, we don't know a lot about this generation right now because I said the oldest is 11. So 
they're still developing, they're still growing. We will see how they turn out when they're adults, I suppose. But once again, they have had a huge impact from COVID-19 when you're five years old or something and you, you've got a few years without uh, connections with other people outside your family. It's, you know, you have to wonder what effect that will have on babies at such an important age of development. Uh, I imagine it's a big one, but we will see. I don't know. I'm interested to see, but hopefully it hasn't affected them negatively, but that's a big one. We can predict a few things about their lifetime. It's scary and exciting at the same time that I imagine these kids will be very tech savvy. Uh, tech savvy just means really good with technology. And I imagine they're going to experience huge changes in their lifetime when we think about technology and AI and the environment as well and how that will change. And hopefully they'll be positive, but I'm sure there will be some struggles as well. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes. So there we have it. That honestly took longer than I expected to go through those generations, but there we have it. We had Alpha, Zoomers, Millennials, X, Boomers, and Silent. So that's what, six generations? Almost a hundred years of generations there. So very interesting stuff. I hope you enjoyed hearing that, and I don't know how much you knew about that anyway. But yeah, as I said before, please let me know what generation you are a part of, and let me know your experience and opinion of being part of that generation. I would love to hear. As I said before, I'm honestly quite happy to be a millennial. I think it's a really good mix between having technology to use, but not having such a large influence that it totally overtook my life as a young child. So I have a very good childhood, I had good childhood memories, but I still was able to receive the benefits of technology in my 20s. So for me it worked well, but I am quite an optimistic person. Maybe you think the same about your generation too. Now I did want to leave some time for an audio message today. And again, this took longer than I expected, but I think we can still squeeze it in here at the end. So I have a message from Shaun, I believe is how he said his name, and he has a question that he left on the website. So let's listen now and I will respond afterwards. Hi Michael, this is Shaun speaking from Bangladesh and I'm really a big fan of you because I like your podcast and I have been listening to your podcast for the last one year. I will have a questions for you. Uh, I like your podcast and I used to listen to your podcast for a long time, but last five months or six months I was used to do a job and that's why I couldn't listen to your podcast. And at that time my job was like in an American call center and talking to people from America. At that time I just lost my British pronunciation and I can't talk like before. I really appreciate your podcast and I again started listening to your podcast for last month. So at that time, like now, what should I do for that to improve my pronunciation, improve my British accent like before? Your pronunciation is quite understandable and I really love your podcast. So can you give me some suggestion how I can speak like before when I could speak very well, when I talk to someone, all the people say that, oh my God, you have a British accent. And sometimes I suggest them to listen to your podcast to have a sounds like you uh, that I had before. So thank you very much, Shawn, for your message. Really appreciate you listening and replying with a, a voice message. If you want to leave a voice message as well, you can go to my website, levelupenglish.school slash podcast. And further down the page, you can leave an audio message for the podcast. But basically, in the message, you were saying that you feel like you are losing your British accent. First of all, I wouldn't worry too much. I don't think it's so easy to lose an accent. And I think it's also important to allow your accent to develop naturally. You know, naturally over time it will change and uh, you'll absorb different parts into the accent. I'm usually against the idea of trying to force an accent to be a certain way. Because if you force an accent, it can sound unnatural. So try to speak naturally and don't try to force it in any specific way. And I will just say, Shawn, that your accent sounds fantastic. It's very easy to understand. So if I were talking with you uh, 
At your job, then I'm sure I would understand you clearly on the phone. But my advice to you wouldn't really be very different from advice I would give to anyone generally wanting to improve their accent or their pronunciation. So I've done an episode on this before, you can research in the archives. I think one of the main issues though is just that you maybe are surrounded by people who have a different accent and you're picking up aspects of their accent too. So I think it's very natural that the people we spend time with, it changes how we speak over time. You know, for example, I don't sound like my family and I think that's partly because of my friends and the people I know. I've kind of changed my accent without realizing. And also, I have many friends who are not native English speakers. And naturally, my accent has shifted, I think, hopefully, to become more clear, clearer to these people. So even when I'm talking off the podcast, I still talk fairly clearly because I'm so used to trying to make myself understood to people who may not be as good as English as me, right? So naturally, the people you hear and spend time with, you will adjust over time. So that's important. Maybe you could uh, get a teacher or engage with native speakers as well, or it doesn't have to be native, but people with the accent that you like, right? That's one tip. Uh, shadowing is another great tip. L- do lots and lots of listening. And as you're listening, try to repeat after them and what they're saying, stuff like that. And yeah, maybe you could watch a lot of uh, British TV shows as well and that kind of stuff. But I really wouldn't necessarily recommend any kind of phonetic exercises for you specifically because it already sounds like your pronunciation is clear. So maybe you just want to keep focusing on those areas and, and work on that. So it's not super uh, practical advice maybe, but hopefully that gets you in the right direction to focus on that more. But good luck, let me know how it goes. I would like to say before we finish, a quick thank you to some really nice podcast reviews. I have one here in Japanese, which I think I'm going to leave until next week. So if you want to hear me try to read the Japanese one, come back next week to hear that. But first of all today, we have one from uh, Hervé. Oh, that sounded wrong. How can I pronounce this name? It's a French name. Like, uh, oh, it's, from what I know in French, they don't pronounce the H at the beginning of words, right? So would it be like Hervé? Hervé. No, I, I don't speak French. I'm very sorry. I don't know how to pronounce your name. Um, it's kind of like Hervé31. That's the username. So I'm very sorry about getting your name so bad. But anyway, they said, Hi, Michael. This podcast is very interesting for learning English. I listen to a lot of English podcasts, about one hour a day, to improve my English, and this podcast is the best for me. You speak very clearly, not too quick, and I'm able to understand everything. It's motivated me a lot. The topics are fun, and also the duration of each episode is about 30 to 40 minutes, which is perfect. Not too much rambling. Just another thing, you have not many comments from Apple users, but in reality, it's not easy to find the way to write a review on Apple Podcast app. Mm. Thank you for this great resource, Hervé from France. Thank you very much. I hope you still have those nice views after I got your name so wrong, but yes. And regarding your comment, maybe it's not easy to write a review, that could be true. I do have a button on the podcast though. I try to make it easy. So if you go to levelupenglish.school slash podcast, there's a button you can click to leave a review there. Just click one button and it will open the right place. So hopefully that will work. But thank you for taking the time to write such a nice uh, review. Let's do one more now from Turkey, from Omer, uh, Omer Fiza, who says, I enjoyed listening to this episode. This is my first time hearing your podcast. I want to ask if it's possible to get Lisa's account on Instagram or Facebook. And does she have her own podcast? Thank you for this fantastic episode. Well, thank you very much, uh, Omer or Omar, for the review. Really appreciate that. It doesn't let me know what episode you're talking about, but because you mentioned Lisa, I guess you're talking about 273. If you ever want to see my guests' social media pages, you can go to their podcast page. So that is 
uh, podcast 273. You can find that on my website. And at the bottom of the page, you will see the social media links. So for that episode, Lisa does have Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and her own website as well. I don't know if she has her own podcast, but you can find out on the website. So hope that helps. Hope those links uh, get you to where you want to go. I spent a little while trying to find a quote about generations to finish today. And this one is a surprising one from the former president, Bill Clinton. Today's generation of young people holds more power than any generation that came before it to make a positive impact on the world. That's really nice. A nice reminder that uh, with the power of technology and things like that, the young people of today have a huge power to make a positive impact. So let's try and use that power for good. Let's do that. So thank you very much for watching or listening. Really hope you enjoyed this episode. I will see you in the next one while I go to rest my voice now. See you then. (laughs) You have been listening to the Level Up English podcast. If you would like to leave a question to be answered on a future episode, then please go to levelupenglish.school forward slash podcast. That's levelupenglish.school slash podcast. And I'll answer your question on a future episode. Thanks for listening.